Um, let's see. So, I'll call me to order. First thing is approval of minutes of July 16, 2019. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of July 16th. I second that. Is there any discussion? Very nice, Joyce. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next addition to the agenda, I have uh, one is uh, uh, budget transfers the last fiscal year. Is there any other? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next is communications from the um, finance director, Barbara Herbst. Uh, the town finished the year with a healthy surplus of almost $300,000. Uh, so that's a good position to be in. Um, it's consistent with other years, but actually a little ahead of other years because we um, got a increased, uh, we got more money from the state than we budgeted for. Um, so that was good and also we have been uh, successful in collecting some uh, back taxes. So those two items helped um, generate a surplus for the year. Nice. So that's good and thanks also to Barbara, as you see behind my desk, we've traded in the high chair that was here for a year from the lump rummage sale for a little low boy, um, maybe antique, maybe not. And on that is a computer, so now I have my own computer. And thanks Joyce for putting up for years of me sharing her computer, but now we've <laughs> upgraded the office thanks to our in-house designers. And uh, we now have a computer and also to symbolize our, our upgrade, we have soon to have hot water in the town hall. It is hot now. It is hot, so we have hot water, hot running water. in the town hall, and we have replaced the hot water heater in the town office. So things are looking up. Did the Cricket Valley thing ever arrive? Uh, that's on our, is that on our agenda? I didn't see it. It's not on our agenda. It should be on our agenda. So let's add that to our agenda. All right, so there's a motion to add uh, the uh, air monitor to the agenda. If that was a motion by uh, Priscilla, I'll second that. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you. I thought it was a question, but you've taken it as a motion. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> right. We're um, cooperative group. Good. So anyway, we'll add that. Um, any public comments? Okay, the press is here. Double press. Yeah. So, uh, first on our agenda is uh, West Cornwall uh, Town Meeting, 26th of July. Comments, um, reflections. So anyway, I can start. I mean, I think it was a very well uh, attended meeting and thank everybody for coming out and spending their uh, Friday night participating in democracy. It was good to see such a good turnout and a, de a decisive vote of neighbors talking about a complicated issue. And I think uh, the town has now a mandate to proceed with um, the uh, West Cornwall community wastewater uh, system. So anyway, I think that's good. I have talked to the engineer, Steve McDonald, and also talked to people at USDA about getting together uh, this month to go over the application process to USDA um, and some of the details as far as that. So that uh, will happen uh, later this month. Uh, and again, we'll be 
talking to other people about grants and other potential funding sources. So, in fact, the lieutenant governor is coming to town on Monday next, and I'll be possibly, probably, touring West Cornell with her on Monday afternoon. So we'll see how that goes. Who's that? Who's coming? The lieutenant governor. Oh, okay. Susan Bicewitz is coming to town. So when any anybody comes by, we'll tell them about our community project. So <clears throat> my thoughts on the, the meeting were that it sort of reminisced uh, something from 50 years ago, which would be it was one small step uh, for moving the process forward with the possibility of one giant step for West Cornwall. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was nice to see a couple, over 200 people there. Right, sure. Yeah, so forward, onward. Uh, anything else about the um, town meeting? Um, all right, next is culverts. Uh, we had a pre-construction meeting. We had three uh, potential bidders this time. And bids are due uh, on the culvert projects next Monday, so at 10 o'clock. So we, I will uh, report to you the results of that uh, process and get any recommendation or news uh, from Roger. Um, so hopefully, again, that those projects will start right after Labor Day. Any other questions on those projects? Uh, I just put on there July motor vehicle crashes. I think we had, there were at least 10 motor vehicle crashes in the month of July in um, Cornwall, uh, most of which were responded to by the fire department and rescue squad. Uh, again, I think some of this is uh, distracted drivers due to people watching uh, their devices instead of the road. So I would urge people, especially in the curvy areas of town, to pay attention to the road. Uh, what did, roads were they mostly uh, on? Mostly on Route 4. Route 4. Route 4. The, the biggest crashes were on Route 4. Um, one up on the top by Mohawk and the other two on the S turns between Cornwall Bridge and uh, Cornwall. And I did talk to the uh, commander at the Troop B and asked him to increase uh, speed monitoring on that section road, especially coming out of Cornwall Bridge. Um, so hopefully that will happen as they are <coughs> sometimes can move around there. Uh, patrols to um, So when you help say out. devices, you mean they're on their phones? Yeah, people are on their phones or just distracted or yeah. something. Something went wrong. And I'm not sure on a, in all cases that's what happened, but it seems like it's. And in, there's increased frequencies of motor vehicle crashes, and it's just not a great thing. It, happen, it can happen very quickly. Uh, I did get a phone call about traffic being routed along Popple Swamp and right. concerns about the speeding on yeah. Popple Swamp Road. So that if, if we are going to reroute, maybe you could put a fireman or somebody there to slow people down. Um, well, if firemen don't really do speeds, but we can put slow signs or something out maybe but it's just very narrow road to take the narrow route, road and take route seven to route four is traffic so um, it's real uh, so anything else on all that Gordon has uh, yes because uh, one of my uh, neighbors uh, uh, Mary Lee and uh, Karen Spell who have two children and uh, you know Mullins next door has his uh, son who's there with him a lot and then get the new lady around the block bought a house and she's got a granddaughter there. I mean it's one of the places where your concentration of children who are, you know, very active and outdoorsy. And uh, as uh, Priscilla just said, um, you know, they, they just come down that hill like lunatics when they reroute them. And also when I went to go home, um, I understand that the fire department can't stay there all day, but when they leave, 
left the road closed off because I guess you had the hazmat team in, right? So it was, it was turned over to the state yeah, of Connecticut. Yeah, it was closed for quite a while. So they put the barriers across the road so I was even unable to get into my own driveway. And uh, I know it's not heavy for anybody else, but it was a, a, a task for me to get out of my car and, uh, you know, get the things moved so I could actually get into my driveway. So I, I would just ask you, next time you're talking to the commander, if you could do something about, uh, you know, a police presence. And when they tend to look at it from the uh, Cornwall Bridge end of things, they look for the people not stopping at that stop sign there. So I hope they will just concentrate on, on that part. You know, they pull into that pull off over there. And, uh, you know, it needs to be slowed down on, as you pointed out, the, the curvy section of that road. So I would hope that you could uh, put a fire on this behind to get a little more presence, uh, both normally and in a special case when we do have the road detour. So thank you. OK. Uh, next, we have the Kerma refund check. Did we did receive our check for $7,100, which was most welcome. What is CERMA? Kerma is the Connecticut Interlocal Risk Management Agency, which is our insurance agent. Oh. It gives us liability and workers' comp insurance. And as we had a, a good year, they returned part of our premium. Thank you. Uh, the town needs to appoint a tourism representative uh, to the Regional Tourism Board, so I would suggest that we uh, forward that to the Economic Development Committee and seek their recommendation on that. It's not a huge task, but I think it's important that the town has some representation mm -hmm. on that. Um, Next is the Hammond Beach easement, revisiting. Um, I did get a call from HVA who is in charge of monitoring uh, the beach at Hammond Beach as a um, condition of the gift from the Hammond family. Uh, there was an easement put on the beach which has I think 25 sections to it. HVA is in favor of making the easement somewhat simpler and easier to administer. So I'm going to meet with them and the Hammond family to discuss a simplification of the easement that would be agreeable to all parties. And I think at that time we'll talk about sub subjects as allowing some paddleboard and limited kayak use or some other things that uh, Marina Kachabi, the beach director, has um, thought of. So I think it's good. It's been a big success for the last 30 years, and like most things, 30 years can use some revisiting. So we will be doing that and hopefully get something for the board and the other parties to sign off on fairly soon. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see, what else? Uh, the day road, the little extension there. Um, the highway department extended day road 75 feet to allow a property owner access to a town maintained road. And, uh, and it's we, been done? It's been done. Good. Ready we'll for take visitors. Take a look at it. Uh, so that's good. Uh, so that wasn't a big undertaking. Uh, West Cornwall parking. I uh, had, had some interesting conversations the last couple of days. Uh, as we know is that from our last meeting, we've established the boundary lines uh, in West Cornwall for the buildings, a lot of the state right away state property goes through some of the buildings uh, talking to the state. They feel they do not own the buildings themselves, even if the right of way goes through the buildings. Uh, however, uh, on Monday, I got a call from Russ uh, Zawicki, uh, owner of the former Wandering Moose property. He said he had a new tenant uh, who would like to open a business there in the next, uh, within the next month. And so I met the new potential business person. 
uh, and we have facilitated some of the permitting process so he hopes to open up a business in uh, within the next month hopefully by Labor Day so he's going to make himself known and his business plans known soon but I did go over the parking situation there and how everyone is welcome to park on the state and town right of ways in Cornwall and no parking signs are not appropriate and I will write Russ tomorrow restating that and giving him copies of the map but I think this is a a most welcome development to get an empty building filled up with a new bu business which I think will fit well into the into the village and he did say he the new business owner had been watching uh, the videos of um, the last couple months and the meetings and stuff and found it interesting of the town's uh, efforts to revitalize the village so I think this will be a key part of that process so I think that's a good positive development in downtown West Cornwall so again he will be uh, when he gets a few more things ironed out he will be ready for uh, publicity so did he say he good. was taking the no parking signs down uh, did he say that no I don't think we said that but I told him I did not feel they were appropriate or enforceable did he have an answer that wasn't the basis of our conversation. Our basis was reestablishing a business, and certainly his business will need parking there. And he did ask if he could restrict parking only to his business, and I said I did not feel that was appropriate, that anyone is welcome to park anywhere in Cornwall, or else we'll have a sign for Bain Real Estate, we'll have a sign for somebody's house, we'll have a sign, and that way nobody, you know, it just will be a circus. So he got that, and again, um, because some businesses are open during the day and there, it seems like it's worked well in the past not to have no parking mm -hmm. signs and allow people to park where where it's appropriate and again having the extra parking down at the bend is is useful um, and he said he he understands he gets he gets it so again I think it's very positive um, development and he, so I would expect the you no know, parking signs to come down. I'll so, keep you posted. Great. <clears throat> another forward step. Right, another small step. <laughs> small step. Yep. So anyway, that's that's positive. Um, let's see, on um, additions, let's see, we have a tax refund here. Two refunds for seventy six forty seven, and uh, there's two other ones totaling sixty nine dollars and twelve cents. So you guys can look for that while I dig out some more information about air monitors. Who died? Probably probably a car. Something. I can't just pay too much. Is that also pain? Is that something? To These are all overpayments. Yeah, and they're all motivated. So it's not much. Okay, so there's a motion to approve those I tax will refunds. I will approve those tax refunds. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, let's see, additions. We have budget transfers. Uh, we did uh, end the town with, end the fiscal year with a substantial surplus but we do have to make some budget transfers to cover uh, some categories uh, you can see there's some for Board of Selectmen for the temporary clerk line small amount small amount uh, for the highway department and fairly substantial amount uh, for 
the uh, san uh, the dump sanitation recycling uh, mostly for um, a couple things one was uh, for the salaries and wages because we had a change in uh, personnel we had to have uh, hire some temporary people and and double up while we were getting th training things going we also did have an increase in uh, MSW fee fees uh, for things. So those are the major budget transfers, which you can all look at here. Barbara's they're all going to come out of contingencies. These are all going to come out of contingencies. So there's the big, the big one to sign. Here's the copies. Here's copies. More copies. Copies for the press. So this then goes to the Board of Finance, which will then, at its next meeting, uh, vote to do these budget transfers. What supplies and repairs? I'm not sure what the major repair there was. Oh, maybe the heat in the film? No, that might have been when we had to redo the heater. I think that was the biggest thing. Oh no, it says large repair to the cardboard bale. All right. The heater would have been maybe capital. Right. That's on. Uh, so what is this total? Uh, 14, 15, 15,000? Right. Is this the final? That's pretty much it. This will be the final of, yeah. the, of, the pre, of the fiscal year that just ended. Correct. So I'll make a motion we sign off on these budget transfers. There's a second. Second. Well, I have just one question, not to. Yeah. Uh, questions are good. Yeah, um, right in. Dick, I don't understand it. At the bottom of each paragraph it says variance zero. What does that mean? I mean you've got the figures above what's being what's overspent or not spent but then on each line it says variance zero. I didn't know what that meant. I think that I think if, is that where the Board of Selectmen temporary clerk is over by three that amount. Yeah. So we're going to add this amount to contingency in the other direction. Yeah. So so we won't be over or short. We'll end up at zero. Oh. So basically this will balance the book. So on each one of these accounts We balanced it. We're balanced it out. Zero with, means we balanced it. With three yeah, with three hundred oh, okay. and one dollars coming out of contingency, then there's no variance in that in that line because okay. we balanced everything out. Okay. No I Barbara understand. Has to. Thank you. You will there still could be and there are many lines that don't reach what we budgeted, I believe. Right. That would I mean be they true. come in under. Correct. Yeah. And these came in over, which is not allowed. No. Okay. So you have to come up with a way to uh, afford them. Mm -hmm. if that's the right way to, to fund them. Mm -hmm. And we're doing that by moving money, uh, allocated money from contingency. Okay. Does that sound right? That sounds right on. Okay, thank you. Unlike the other forms of government, we cannot run a deficit, which is <laughs> good in the long run. <laughs> Do you get that? Mm -hmm. And that ends up being part of uh, Barbara's records. Barbara, well, yeah, and then it gets into the audit so that the official official year-end tabulations of okay. where we're at. Good. So then we're on to the air monitor. Uh, we did solicit uh, proposals from several companies. We got one back from Valley View Services, LLC, Great Hollow Road, West Cornwall, uh, which is uh, Garrett Deneen's, um electrical business. And he has proposed installing the um, air monitor 
device and trench um, and conduit um, and permits and so that would get us up monitoring the air. So his proposals for $975 which seems reasonable considering the amount of work that has to be done and that would get things going because the people concerned about the air coming from Cricket Valley they're running ahead of schedule so they want to get some baseline data um, on all the little sites. And where is the site that they chose? The site is out by the uh, solar panels to the south of uh, the town clerk's office. Oh, okay. So it's right out here. Right. But okay. far enough from the building not to be influenced by the building. So there's all a little tricky science to where it's located. Is it very big? No, it's here. Is it here? It's like this it's big. That, that white box. Right? That little white box. It's right in there. Oh my goodness. Small yes. as it, smaller than the red box. Right yeah. there. That's it. But oh, okay. tricky, tricky. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I'll make a motion to accept um, Valley View Services uh, proposal. Is there I a second? Sec I second that. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll be very curious what the air quality is before yeah. and after they start the plant. Right. I bet it's, I bet it's, yeah, the air in Connecticut isn't all that great, as we learned. So if this is up and running in the next 30 days, Yeah. Um, uh, making a September 1st, Right. September 15th. And time for the Ag Fair. When is the, do we have an ETA for when Cricket Valley is supposed to go online? Do they have a... Do they 2020 have a, sometime, but they're moving right along. So not till next year is what I you're think, saying. I think, but I'm just sort of making that up. Oh. Yeah. I would if, think if we'd done this as soon as we got it, we in theory we'd had a year of data before, but they're moving faster and we're moving slower than proposed. So now we will be... I would okay. think we'd have nine months of data. I would also think they're going to uh, come online slowly while they test all their right. components mm -hmm. at the facility itself. I don't think they're going to just fire up uh, in one fell swoop. Right. But I think it would be interesting to see the seasonal variations in yeah, air, yeah, yeah, yeah. In no, air quality here, even without the plant. Um, how does it, is it better or worse in the winter? Who knows? You know, today's a, a day that seems to have a lot of Stuff. hanging air. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, public comments? Are there any public comments? Gordon, if you cost all things really exciting about the new tent at uh, the old wandering moose, uh, but you mentioned the, you know, the parking at the bend, would it be possible to have the town pay for uh, a sign that would tell people that there's parking available at the bend? Yes. So how? Well, we could put a parking sign up. Uh, yeah, we can do that at some point. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to order that sign? Is somebody going to design it? Or well, no, I think we, we can figure something out. We have a sign company that makes signs. Oh, good. So, no, I, I thought of that before. But we hadn't done anything because we were busy. I was wondering can, also about the thing I asked about at the last meeting, about the invasive vines that are overtaking a large tree on the uh, green. Yeah. Uh, I talked to the tree warden, and he said he was going to tackle the vines. Great, thank you. You're welcome. And what did you hear back from Eversource on the ugliness that they completed at the entrance to our town? That, of course, in the old Berkshire store, and it said they might be uh, open to doing some. Uh, oh, they're coming up with some landscape plan. Well, I hope it's not their normal 10 Arbor Beauty plans. Uh, well, anyway, I think their best efforts will be welcome. So anyway, when, Are they when going I... Are give you a plan for approval? That's, that's what he said. And did he give you a date? Because he's no. dragging his feet. Well, anyway, I will, when I see him next, I'll bring it up.
Thank you. Okay, any other public comments? Tough questions in the press. Here we go. Just wonder any progress on our investigation of the mystery microscopes? Oh, good question. I've uh, heard back from Maria. She hadn't. She has not progressed on the investigation, so it's getting a little. And I have an. I found a person at Optimum because we have another Optimum question. So I have a phone number and a phone call to make to Optimum. So. so it's ongoing. It's ongoing. It's intriguing. It is intriguing. And uh, again, I'm sure we'll get. We will find. We will know more. Mm -hmm. Time goes. On. It's. Any other questions? Okay. So our next event is paying bills. Is this is this plug and play? Pretty much it. When we get when what this, is this plug and play? I think it's pretty plug and play. It's been calibrated already yep. down in at Kent. Yeah, we're not touching the calibrations. I think we plug it in and call up the mothership in Kent and say we're on board. See what and then they say. It's just going to be all. Yep. Uh, it'll send out its signals and. Mm -hmm. I think you have to do something about getting it to talk to the Wi-Fi, but then after you get that done. Talk to the Wi-Fi in this building. In that building. Or that building. Maybe give it the password. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From Gara's building over there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Did you adjourn? Yes, no, we got to pay our little bills. bills. Oh. That's it for the video. That's it for the, for the video. <laughs> for the exciting part. That's the exciting part.